Hi guys, it's Punchy. Today I've got a build for you that I think changes up the game for Montrealist players. I haven't seen any videos on this type of build, so I think it's something new for you guys to enjoy. Hopefully I can convince you of some of the benefits of picking ice when trying out a Montrealist or M1 style build because it actually helps you if you want to use weapons instead of mantras. It sounds weird, but hear me out. Before we start, I gotta say thanks for the support on my video addressing all of Layer 1 of the depths. The amount of subscribers that have joined the channel recently has been incredible and I hope to keep uploading content you'll enjoy. Again, make sure to like and subscribe if you want more content for Deepoken. Alright, let's get into the stats for this character. I've got a little bit in everything, so I think this build definitely is attractive if you enjoy a balanced playstyle. At power 56, I have 60 in strength for strong left damage, 15 fortitude for a little bit of health, 25 agility for agility talents, 40 intelligence for overflowing dam, 20 willpower for black diver armor, 25 charisma for charisma talents, 20 in frost draw, and 100 in medium weapons. Currently I'm not using any enchants and I forgot to get a bell. I mean, what's the point if you can't even use them in 1v1s? Regardless, this build is definitely an end game level build just due to how high the level is and the amount of legendary cards I was able to pull. As I was creating this character, I originally made the build as an address, but I ended up wiping and in my rage I decided on Felinor as the race that would spearhead my painting operation. You see, my idea for a character was to act as a painter by applying coats of status to the enemy and then removing them for extra M1 damage. Of course, if you had a cat, you'll know that they do the opposite of what you think they'll do, so I thought it would be pretty funny to make a build that went against everybody's expectations. The main draw of this build is doing increased damage with nullifying clarity. Pretty much, this talent removes status effects that are inflicted on enemies while doing more damage to them. Weird, right? I was thinking when making this build, what could be the best attunement for a build that revolves around a status. Of course, we have Flame Charm, but it's too easy to roll out of fire. Shadow and Electricity are cool, but they don't last any time at all. Gale Breath could be interesting, but we do need specific talents and mantras in order to apply the Gale status. But then I thought, why not use Frost Draw? Frost Draw is the best element for applying status because the cold effects last for quite a while and the moves have a ton of range. Excellent for the nefarious deeds I'm about to do. So, I ended up speedrunning 20 in Frost Draw as well as 40 in my intelligence in order to get 2 star mantras and a chance for overflowing dam. As I mentioned earlier, this is actually so much better for people who just want to rely on their M1s for damage and use mantras for combo extension. Many people just go for the basic moves like strong left and end up getting leftover mantras they can't even equip, so I suggest everybody who wants to use their M1s the most to instead pick Frost Draw. To make the best of this build and do more damage, hit some with a frost draw move and hit them with the M1 to remove the status and deal more damage. Surprisingly, the charm effects will always stay on them. Some other talents I had in order to increase my overall damage were Wyvern's Claw for more damage in the air, Tough Love to do more damage against charmed enemies, Charge of Return for more M1 damage when under an elemental effect, Nullifying Clarity, of course, to trade status for damage, and Overflowing Dam for damage with a full ether bar. Unfortunately, I was missing Lose Your Mind. You can also eat a Mushroom Omelet if you want to do more damage in PvP. While we're talking about how this build works, I should mention what mantras I'm using to optimize this build. I believe I have the best possible mantras for the build I'm trying to make. The first move I've got is Master's Flourish. It's your basic double slash that allows for great momentum and pressure on blocks and decent knockback to put your opponents in a neutral position. This move isn't used for damage or major combos, but it's something I throw out to apply charm on unsuspecting foes. Strong left is the next thing in my hotbar and it would be tragic to forget this move. Block breaking your enemy or sending them far away is a blessing for this build because it always leads to an ice eruption. It doesn't matter if they get hit by the eruption or they parry or dodge it, it's a 50-50 move where they either get hit or they dodge. Strong left also scales off a of strength, so it's our most damaging mantra. Slap an insignia gem on this to reduce the next mantra's windup. Ice play or freeze dries one of our paint brushes for today and this is how we're going to be putting the paint on our enemy for extra damage. This move does a flurry of slashes and can hit a couple times but that's not the main reason why we use it. A modifying card called glacial mobility allows us to cast a running attack with this move. If we throw it out it doesn't put this move on cooldown but most importantly it still applies frost or what I'm calling our paint. I put three eternal log stones on this so the status lasts longer. Next move is glacial arc which I only use for mobility. No need to use this in combos or arena because the damage is minimal for this build. Just good for escaping the depths when needed. Taunt which is my support mantra is not necessary but is a appreciated. I tend not to use this on this build, but it does prevent players from jumping. I could be spamming this to control the enemy more, but I don't like using this on this build. Regardless, it's probably the best support mantra for a painter build, but I don't recommend wasting precious ether casting this. Ice Eruption or Cold Lemonade is another one of our paint brushes, and it does the job the best. With its crazy range and viability as a combo finisher, I use this whenever I can to set up a Nullifying Clarity M1. Throw this out whenever you can, and profit when you apply status to your enemy. Ironically, all my mantras are pure utility, not damage, but I do want to have a full ether bar at all times to maximize my damage. Some talents that keep my ether bar high I have got to be Eureka and Engage. Engage is one of the best talents in the entire game in my opinion, and that's because you can regain ether back based on how much damage you do to them or their block, and you'll even get ether back without reservoir. Why would you ever skip this move? It's so damn good. And don't even try to spam mantras on this build because it won't work. With Return to the Dark Ages, deal half mantra damage, but only take half mantra damage yourself. Remember, instead of doing damage, we actually just want to hit them to apply the status effect and give them a fresh coat of paint. I think this build is very, very good, and if you want to slow down this video, you can check out all the cards I have.
The gear I'm using today is the Razor Cutlass and some pretty drippy equipment. As some of you know, I've taken a vow to not use the Shattered Katana, so I'm using one of my other favorite weapons. This weapon does a lot of damage and does bleed, which may count as a status, but I do enjoy how cool it looks and how it performs in combat. Black Diver is the armor I'm using, and it's something for either regeneration and drip, because who doesn't like this outfit? It's one of my favorite wearable armors in my opinion. Last thing of note is this coat. It's the Ash Elite Pathfinder or something? It renamed to Starduster when I infused it, but it is dropped from Squibbo, so if you want to pick this up, go fight the squid. And that's all. Check out some fights to see how I use my painting skills in a way that works in PvP. Thanks for watching guys and make sure to like and subscribe if you want me to make more content similar to this. Have a good one.